Hello, my name is Connor Smith, and welcome back to another episode of Data in the Wild, hosted by Data Meaning. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we're covering a quick intro to the optimization tool in Alteryx. Let's get started. Now, optimization falls into a category of analytics. There's three different categories. You've got predictive, where you're trying to predict the future. You've got descriptive, where you're trying to describe what happened in the past. And this third category where optimization falls is going to go under the prescriptive category. And this is a category where you're really trying to decide what to do. So to better introduce the optimization tool, I'm going to give you a quick word problem. The problem is this. A young man who lives in a remote village must travel 20 miles to a nearby marketplace to sell items. He cannot carry more than 50 pounds on his track. He must choose a combination of items that will produce the most profit while staying within his weight limit. So you see up here a list of the items. You've got item A, B, C, just to keep it simple. You have the profit associated with those items as well as the weight associated with those items. And then just listed explicitly here is the weight limit. Now a quick intuitive approach to solve this problem to get the most profit for his weight limit, he might start filling up his knapsack with the items that have the highest profit to weight ratio. So if you were to do that, you take the profit divided by weight and you just start picking the items that have the highest profit to weight ratio. Now, if you took this approach, the first item you choose is item B. But this would not be the optimal choice, right? Because if you chose item B, item B has 40 pounds associated with it. You notice item A and C have 30 and 20. If I chose 40, I couldn't fit any other items in my knapsack and I'd only walk away with a profit of 60. Okay? Again, not the optimal choice. I'll show you what is. The optimal choice would be to choose A and C which would stay within our weight limit. If you do 30 plus 20, you come under or right at the 50, and we'd end up with a profit profit of 65, right? 40 plus 25, okay? So you see that's the optimal choice. So pretty simple, easy to do by hand. What if we had a scenario where we have hundreds and hundreds of variables to choose from? And not only do we have a constraint, we actually have three, four, five, maybe we have hundreds of constraints we have to stay within, okay? that type of problem becomes very difficult to work on by hand. And so that's where we turn to computers and that's where we can turn to Alteryx as one such tool to, to help us solve these optimization problems. Let me flip over to Alteryx and I'll actually introduce you to the optimization tool itself. It is going to be available under the prescriptive tool palette, the first tool there, optimization. There's a lot of configuration. I'm not going to cover all the configuration. I'm basically going to just use the the um, default configuration that's available here. We're gonna use the input mode. We're gonna use the, uh, specify the model as matrices, okay? The integer problem we're gonna choose is going to be a mixed integer, so that's not technically a, a default configuration, but it's one of the second choices there. The, the solver we're gonna use is the GLPK pack there. And then this is gonna be a really important step is whether we're looking to maximize or minimize an objective. So I'll show you the objective we're focused on. We, we know we want to maximize our profit here. Um, but if I had this box unchecked, I could choose to minimize our profit as well. And then lastly, you have the constraint for input anchor A, uh, whether that constraint is in the rows or if that constraint is, uh, or if the variables are in the rows instead. Okay, so those are gonna be kind of the two choices we'll you wanna use today, uh, or you can use a sparse basic matrix here. And you can dig into additional details in the, in the settings for this tool. You can always go to the help page to learn how to use this tool more. I uh, just want to give you a quick taste of this tool and how I'm going to set it up today. So just pull over that help page. It does have documentation. Uh, I'll give you enough to get started. You can always review the documentation and you can always sign up for one of our classes as well and give you some more detail on how to um, deploy this tool on your end. All right. So that being said, I'll show you again in Alteryx, we're using the same data set, the same word problem, right? We've got three variables, A, B, C, 
same number of profits, the same weight. It's a pretty simple problem. How can we have Alteryx solve this for us? Okay, so the answer, optimization tool. How do we configure the optimization tool? I'll tell you this, these input anchors, this is where the optimization tool is a little intimidating is it has so many input anchors. Um, in our situation, we only have to use two. In a lot of situations, you can get away with using just two or three. Um, hopefully, I'll give you a, a good idea of how to use at least two here. And, and maybe if we've got time, I'll, I'll do the third. All right, but let's take a look at this. I've got my data set. First thing I'm gonna do with my data set is rename a couple of, uh, couple columns here. The item column, that's going to be my variable, okay? And, I, and the reason I'm renaming it as variable is because this O input anchor requires a very specific naming convention. It has to be the word variable, and it has to be lowercase, okay? And then my profit is going to be my coefficient, okay? So when you think of variable, it's like the item that you're going to include in your knapsack or not include, okay? When you think of coefficient, this is the item you're either trying to maximize or minimize, okay? So that's gonna be your coefficient. So we need to have a coefficient. That coefficient needs to be part of the O input anchor, okay? So that gives you a good idea. You'll see here we have those two variables. Technically, we could connect this directly to the O. Uh, I am going to add a couple more optional fields here. And again, you can see this in the documentation. These other fields I'm gonna add are my LB, UB, and my type. And again, the spelling for these fields needs to be exactly the same, including the casing. If you use a capital T, you'll break stuff, all right? LB stands for lower bound. UB stands for upper bound. That means our variable, A, B, and C, can either be a zero or a one. And then we put it as a type, and the type we assigned is letter B for binary, right? We know zeros and ones sounds like a binary type, so we're gonna put it as a as a binary type there. And if you think about it in the knapsack problem, the reason we're choosing whether our variable is zero or one is because we're deciding, do we include that item in our knapsack or do we not include the item in our knapsack? So this is a good way of converting a string value, a string variable like A, B, or C, and converting it to a number. By simply saying whether that item is included or not included, we can switch it over to a binary type of zeros or ones Okay, and that zero or one is then associated with the profit number there. So if it was a one, meaning it was included in the knapsack, then we're going to add up the profit of 40. If it wasn't included, we're not gonna add the value 40, right? So in the case of our optimal solution, we'll see that we get the 40 and we get the 25, but we, and those must have been ones, but we do not include the 60, so we don't add up that value. So we just have 40 plus 25, that's going to be our optimal profit. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. This is the five fields typically you want to have for your O input anchor. And again, it's just giving you a list of variables, the, the profit, or the, in this case, the coefficient associated with those variables, and then what's the maximum, sorry, um, what's the upper bound, and what's the lower bound value associated with those variables as well. Okay, so you put that into your O input anchor and that's all that you have to pass through. Okay, now the A input anchor. I'll show you what the A input anchor looks like, and I'll show you how we get here. Um, this lists out our variables, right? We have variable A, B, and C, and this so lists out our weight associated with each of those variables. Okay, so if you look up here, we have variable A, B, C. The spelling here needs to match, or I should say the spelling here needs to match the spelling in this column. So if you have X amount of variables here, you wanna make sure you have X amount of rows here associated with those same variables, because then you need to assign a weight, okay? Remember how we have that constraint we have to operate under? So the A input anchor is gonna allow you to have an optional, and again, this is optional. I don't have to have this field. I can drop it without any issues. Um, but you can have this optional column identifying our constraint, letting you know that, hey, row one, is our weight values, okay? The reason you may want this is because you may have multiple rows. You may have one constraint for weight. You could have another constraint for the cost of the product. You could have another constraint for the size of the product, okay? If you do that, you're gonna wanna have this column constraint to just help you keep track of which rows is associated with which constraint type, okay? Now let me show you this other part over here on the right-hand side. And this is where this A input 
it kind of acts like a formula, okay? And the formula is this, you have a direction of the formula, less than or equal to, and then you have the RHS, so you may wonder what RHS stands for, that stands for right hand side, and that's the right hand side of the formula. Okay, so we are seeing that essentially 30, 40, 20, sum together, so whichever of these variables are chosen, once summed together, it needs to be less than or equal to 50. So this is how we tell the optimization tool that we need to have a combination of one of these three or a few of these values, but that combination, that constraint, needs to be less than or equal to the value of 50. Okay, so what's a good combination? You could have just 40, that'd be less than or equal to 50. You could have 30 and 20, that'd be less than or equal to 50. You could just have 30, or you could just have 20. And the optimization tool will combine those together and see which of these are able to maximize, again, our coefficient on the O input anchor. Okay, so that's pretty much the setup. I will show you briefly how did I get from, from here to that setup. I, I just used a select tool, and I renamed my item to variable. I renamed the weight field to constraint here. I then passed it. I'll look on this right here, renamed variable weight, okay, pretty simple. And then passed it through a cross tab tool here to kind of spin it on its side, pushing these values into the column headers and these values into the column values, okay. You see that here, all of column headers, column values, click on my output anchor, I got my A, my B, and my C, okay. Now I then added the constraints, I actually just listed the constraint values here. I know that my weight needs to be less than or equal to 50. Okay, so I've got my constraint, again, an optional field here, optional, but this is required. You're gonna have to have a DIR, you're gonna have to have a RHS. You need a direction on the right-hand side of your equation. I then appended it here. Now, I didn't have to. Optionally, I could have just connected this information directly into the B input anchor. Uh, I, I like to have it in A just because I get it side by side, but I do want to let you know that I could have passed this value to the B as well. I'll press save, run, and I'll talk briefly about the output anchors here, and we'll wrap up this, this quick little session. All right, so first output anchor I wanna show you is the S output anchor. Um, the S output anchor is showing us our results, and you'll see the results is zero. Now, what's this result? Uh, currently, this result is the optimal objective. In this case, what's, our, what's the tool set up to do? It's set up to minimize, so I, I need to run this again, but currently it's set up to minimize our objective, and our objective is to minimize our profits. How can we minimize our profit? Well, we can minimize our profit by not including any item in our knapsack. We'll just go with an empty knapsack, and we've minimized our profit. So let me switch this back to maximize, and you'll see a little change in our S output anchor here. Press run for a second, and take a look at these changes. All right, so now if you click on the S output anchor, you'll see this. You see the objective value that's been achieved, right? You see the number 65. This means that the coefficient can be maximized to 65, right, by 40 plus 25, while staying within the constraints of keeping a combination of what's added, A, B, or C, less than 50. Okay, so again, that's the objective value that's achieved coefficients maximized, the profit can be maximized to 65. How is that done? That's done by assigning the value of one to A, the value of one to C, right? And what did we say one equals when associated with A? It means that was included in the knapsack. We included A in the knapsack and we took C and that's the optimal objective there for us. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a good idea of how it works. Typically you can just use this. I will show you the I output anchor as well. Uh, click on the, you, you will have to add a browse tool. If you don't, you'll end up with just kind of this blue text, but looking at the browse tool here, you can see this interactive report. I'll just kind of pass through it briefly here. Uh, it shows you again that objective that was achieved. Docs gives you some information about the variables and coefficients. Here in the decision variables, it shows you that this is the variables that were included, right? That each of these variables were selected. Here's the coefficient associated with each of those variables, so it's a little bit more detailed than the S input anchor, okay? And then down here in the constraint section, it tells you that, hey, you used a total of 50 for your weight, and your total weight that was allowed was 50, okay? Now, if we didn't use the full amount of weight, 
right? You're gonna get this column here called the stock and it'll say what, how much weight you had left over, how much more weight you could have used. So if we had chosen 45 down here, we only had 45 pounds of weight, then we would end up with five pounds of slack over here. Just to give you an idea what that would look like, okay? Uh, so that is the kind of interactive report that's available for you. I will show you column or output D as well. And output D, I'll, I'll tie it back to this interactive report because that's what it is. Uh, it's really a summary tab, which is a, a section of that interactive report. And it's all the variables associated with that summary tab, right? With the objective value was 65. You have what the objective was that you wanted to maximize things. So this, this ties right back to that same report. You had a variable section, right? This list out which variables were included. Okay, what's the binary, what was the value of that variable and what was the profit associated with that variable? 40 here and, and 25 there. And then you also have that constant section which shows you how much weight there was used, okay? What the total weight was allowed and what the slack value was. You notice that these are all separated by a pipe, so if you wanted to further, you could add maybe a texture column and parse this data out and analyze it however you may want to using Ultrix. So it's kind of really nice to have that, that information available for further analysis as needed in your workflows. So hopefully this was a good introduction. That really wraps up today's quick video intro to the optimization tool in Ultrix. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.